um, to our latest sponsor spotlight episode. I know, I feel like I'm on a TV show. Um, <laughs> I think we're just gonna have maybe an hour, a little more of talking. Feel, oh, Julie said she was gonna say this, but it bears you saying, can. saying twice. If you have questions, um, please don't put them in the chat, put them in the Q and A, cause that's where we'll be looking. And um, I will remind you all of this at the end too, but I just wanted to let you know that our LA Biodiversity Symposium is next week. Yay, we're very excited. It's gonna be every afternoon from three to 5 p.m. Um, on Zoom. And we have all kinds of topics. I think a couple of our presenters might actually be on this call. And we're gonna be talking about um, native plants, wildlife and connectivity, how to connect green spaces together to improve biodiversity in our city and county, um, urban resilience, all sorts of things like that. And while it is specific to LA, most of the ideas are not specific to LA. So I think even if you don't live here, you can get a lot out of it. So I will put the link in the chat and um, I'll remind you all again afterward. And with that, take it away, Julie. Great, hi, um, welcome to Bamboo Sorcery Sponsor Spotlight um, with Joe Rafado. Uh, Joe is a skilled contractor with over 30 years of experience available to bamboo sorcery customers for consultation, installation, bamboo recommendations, maintenance, and more. He is particularly good at coming up with creative and cost-effective solutions to challenging projects. A self-taught bamboo expert, Joe is, practical and is a practical and tireless advocate in helping homeowners and landscapers get the right species and the right setup to make their bamboo projects a success. So now I'm going to turn it over to Joe. And like Tony said, put your questions in the Q&A and we'll get to them at the end. So hi, I'm Joe Rafato, And although I can't see you all, I'm sure you're a fabulous audience. I just know. It. So thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to, you know, I'm not sure about the title here. It might be, we should have said more than you'll ever need to know about bamboo, but it might also be just everything. I think we've got it pretty far down to the things that are useful. Um, I'm going to start with a little introduction, and I'll try not to read it word for word and be a boring slide presentation. So um, we're going to talk about how bamboo grows, because that's really important to know in terms of selection. I think a lot of the problems that I see in the field are from people planting bamboo really in the wrong, the wrong bamboo in the wrong place. Um, and um, we're going to talk about how you, how you choose the right bamboo and, you know, what the different requirements are. Um, we've been here, I think, close to 40 years. We have an amazing demonstration garden that's worth I don't think there's anything like it in the U.S. that I know of. Um, each collection, I think there must be over 300 species here. We don't have everything going out to full size, but we have a lot of it. Um, we hey, mostly, Joe. Yeah. Sorry, sorry to bother you, but we're sure. having trouble hearing you. I tried to text Christy. Okay. There, there's a, a weird audio thing. If you're doing something... Um, with your um, speaker, maybe? Maybe if I put on headphones, I don't know. Is so there it's a feedback perfect loop? right right this minute. It's perfect, but okay. it maybe was like need coming to, in and out. Maybe I need to sit closer to the to the mic. How's that? Good so far. I'll okay. get back to you if it's so I'm not, not sure sure what was heard and what wasn't, but um Maybe I'll start from the top since we're not too far in. Um, okay, I hear a little crackle now, so maybe put the headphones on. All right. Uh, 
All right, how's that? Any crackle? Nope, sounds good right now. Okay, I'm gonna turn the volume down here a little bit. These are some serious headphones. So yeah, maybe it may have been squeaking chairs, cha chairs or anyhow. So technical glitches aside. So welcome, um, I'm Joe and we're gonna talk about bamboo. And we're gonna talk about how it grows so you'll know what to plant where. Um, I think that's the main thing is to have some understanding. There's a lot of misconceptions about bamboo and there's a lot of things that you would not think of if you hadn't worked with it for quite a while. So a little bit about bamboo sorcery. We're in the North Bay, Sonoma County, coastal California. A huge demonstration gardens, been here close to 40 years. Um, lots of beautiful bamboo to look at. Um, we do just about everything with bamboo, uh, although we've gotten out of doing uh, removals lately because that's a young man's game and I'm not a young man. So um, we can tell people how to do it, but um, it's definitely hard work. So you wanna get it right when you plant bamboo because taking it out is no fun. So um, yeah, we have over 300 species here. Uh, a lot of it, in the ground grown out so you can see what it looks like. Um, anybody who's in the area is welcome to stop by. I don't think there's anything like this in the in the US in terms of just demonstration gardens, let alone plants to purchase. So here's a few pictures. This is uh, the entryway and some beds down below in our um, retail area where we have a selection of bamboo with some signage for people who just want to read up and see what they can find on their own. And this is myself and my wife, Jennifer. Jennifer's family started the business. Um, they, I think, moved up here well over 40 years ago. Uh, her family was Back to the lands, hippies. They were the hippies, and this was the land. And uh, they set root here. And in the process of trying to figure out how to make the land sustainable and profitable, they they ended up growing bamboo through uh, Gerald's travels. He um, collected bamboo in Asia, brought it back, and got the bug. And the rest is history. What? Okay. My uh, gal Friday, Christy, is watching my back in case I get the techno frights here, and she says it's all good, so we'll continue. Um, so, you know, bamboo is good stuff. It's good for the environment. 35% um, more oxygen, four times more carbon than an equivalent stand of trees. It's very, very fast growing. We'll talk about how it grows a little bit. Um, great for erosion control, you know, hillside stabilization, wind breaks, uh, soil remediation. Um, it will actually uptake, um, you know, biohazards from the soil and sequester them in the in the cane. So I see someone is raising their hand. Do we need to do anything about that? I'm not sure what I can do about it. I think just leave it for now. It might be a mistake. Um, okay. I don't see it here. So. Okay. All right. Well, well, if everybody has anything to ask, please put it in Q and A. So um, yeah. So so bamboo is. It has a lot of beneficial qualities beyond just its ornamental use. Um, wastewater remediation, noise, reducing noise pollution. It's evergreen, so it doesn't lose its leaves in the winter. It, you know, shoots are edible. Uh, the canes are great building material, um, great garden material. So a very useful plant as well as beautiful. 
So something I didn't know 20 years ago when I married into this business was that there are two distinct types of bamboos. There's clumping bamboo and running bamboo. And they have two very distinctly different root systems. So um, I think what people are mostly familiar with are the runners, which you know will grow laterally in all directions. Um, they do require containment or lots of room to spread with no worry. Um, there are some you know, advantages to using runners. Um, they will, in a long narrow space, adapt themselves to that space and run laterally and fill in in a more natural manner than a clumper, which grows in a radial or round form. Um, the, the running rhizomes are basically, you know, I, I think of them as little, little railroad tracks underground running in all directions with buds on them that just pop up along there when they find, you know, a suitable, you know, amount of water, decent soil, and they spread out that way. And if you, if you sever a, a root from the mother plant, it can still continue on and grow. Um, so that's something to know in terms of removing bamboo. When you, when you just cut off a cane, it doesn't eradicate the roots. When you dig out the grove and you leave the roots, it comes back. So that's just something to know. Um, clumpers, I tend to sort of visualize as a, an upside down bunch of bananas growing underground that, that the bananas are the buds swelling up and shooting into canes. And you can see on the little picture there, you know, the two, two examples. So they're great in that they don't require containment, but they don't do as well in narrow spaces because they do not change direction. They just expand in, in an increasing clump. So they can push on fences, pop up just on the other side of fences and continue to spread like that. But they don't come up 10, 20 feet away, like, ooh, where did that come from? So, um, so they have their advantages as well. Um, they do have different growth habits. Um, do we talk about when they shoot in the other pages? Okay, so I won't get into that here. Um, so yeah, it's, it's important to know that there are two types and you wanna choose the right type for the right application. So, oh, here it is. So how does bamboo grow? Well, the first thing that confuses people with bamboo is that they think of it as a bunch of trees and it's actually a bunch of grass stems. So any individual cane that shoots up out of the ground, be it clumper or runner, will grow to its full height in a couple of months, roughly. Now that doesn't mean it will get to its full maximum height. It means that particular cane based on the maturity of the roots, the root mass, the, the growing conditions will shoot up very quickly and you'll get multiple canes per season. As the roots mature, the canes will come up larger and get taller. And they generally tend to come out of the ground, the diameter, the, the diameter that they're going to ultimately be and, and grow straight up. I tend to think of them as like a little floor by floor organic high rise building um, that's just grows by sections. Um, running bamboos tend to shoot in the spring and summer. They have one shoot a year. Uh, in the fall, they spread. In the winter, when it uh, gets cold, they go dormant. When they go dormant, they pull their uh, energy into the roots and go to sleep. And when it warms up in the summer, they shoot again. And they just repeat that cycle over and over. Um, with, with running bamboos, if they don't get a cold snap, they tend to get confused and keep sending up wimpy little shoots. Uh, so they like cold. Uh, they're generally more cold tolerant and more heat tolerant over a wider range than clumpers. 
clumpers tend to be either very cold tolerant and not so heat tolerant or very heat tolerant and not so cold tolerant. Um, clumpers shoot twice a year. So they have a spring shoot and a fall shoot. Um, so they, you get a lot of height, uh, a lot of vertical growth out of clumping bamboo, but they don't spread out as quickly. So they tend to get taller pretty fast, but not wide very quickly. And all of this de is determined by growing conditions. So, I mean, species, of course, maturity of the roots, growing conditions, and the care and maintenance they get. So, you know, adequate water, um, you know, nutrients, fertilizer, you know, pruning, thinning, all of that. And we can talk about that a little bit. Um, so, so planting in ground versus containers. Um, generally, if we're in the ground, we like to use clumpers if we can, because it's much simpler, it's more cost effective. We're not digging trenches, lining them with barrier and then having to worry about them getting out uh, due to some operator error, someone punctures a hole in the barrier. So if we're in the ground and we can use clumpers, we tend to go that way. Um, when we use runners, we really like to do them in above ground containers if we can. Um, we'll go into that a little bit more too. Um, soil, you know, they like a good rich, soil, but they want some dirt in there. So really lightweight mixes, bagged soils tend to drain too quickly and be a little too airy for bamboo. We like a mix of half graded topsoil and then, you know, good stuff, you know, compost and worm castings and lava rock and things like that to break it up. Uh, they do need regular watering. They're not particularly drought tolerant, although at, you know, the more mature the plant, uh, the less water they need. Um, in containers, it's a whole different ball game. So we, we recommend with containers watering year round because we find that rain tends to shed outside of the container and the roots don't have access to that. Um, we like to use micro spray as opposed to drip. Uh, it spreads the water around more and um, it's, easier to see if it's working because the um, we find that the drip emitters and soaker hoses ultimately get buried in the fine roots at the surface of the bamboo and you can't tell if they failed until the bamboo is looking very unhappy. Uh, fertilizing, it's a grass, we use grass food. There's different fertilizing regimens. I'm a big fan of triple 15 three or four times a year because then I don't have to think but the, you know you can go after the roots you can go after more nitrogen um, height of bamboo you can top it it doesn't hurt the bamboo it doesn't make it particularly bush out extraordinarily if you top it it's forever because a cane only grows once um, but you do get new growth in subsequent years um, root pruning is necessary in confined spaces uh, in order to give the bamboo more room to grow. It's also necessary with clumping bamboos. If you have a certain diameter that you need the bamboo to stop, you eventually will need to dig down next to those roots and cut them back. Um, cutting off canes doesn't really work well for reducing clumpers because they'll just continue to spring up on the outside of that root ball. Um, division, you know, division is a whole thing. I think we can get into that more if, um, if people are interested in how you divide bamboo. And the same thing with removals, it's a whole, it's a whole thing. So I think I'll, I'll, I'll stop there with that and we can talk about more about that in the Q&A. Um, so how do you pick the right bamboo? Well, we have a, a list of questions that we ask um, clients when they come in, you know, where do you live? Where's the bamboo gonna be planted? 
that has a lot to do with you know what what uh with narrowing down the choices um you know coastal bamboos are different than inland bamboos and you know hot climates are different than moist climate so um location has a lot to do with it and then you know why do they want to plant bamboo is it a is it a screening situation you know i'm home my neighbors think i'm their entertainment i don't want to be their entertainment anymore um please hide me from them is a lot of it um so how tall does it need to get how tall do you want to start with where do you want it to end up how big is the planting area um you know is it leveled or sloped obviously it's a lot harder to put boxes on a sloped situation you have to you know build steps but it's doable um, is there room for clumpers can we do that is there a clumper that will work in that environment you know what are the what kind of sun you know uh anything unusually windy or coastal salt air um you know, preferences on growing habit, you know, do you want something, does it need to be really straight? Can it be, you know, weeping or arching? Uh, what kind of cane color do you like? You know, there's there's density of leaves and leaf sizes, texture, uh, density of foliage. Do you want to see some canes? Do you not want to see some canes? Um, does it need to be leafy all the way to the ground? So there's a whole a whole list of questions that leads us to some logical choices. And that's what we try to run through with people. Um, I, I think, you know, one of the really important things for me as, as someone who's, you know, been an installer and had to maintain bamboo and get rid of bamboo is, you know, are we gonna be able to give the bamboo both enough room to do what the client wants and are we creating any you know can they get to it to maintain it are we creating you know five years of beauty and then you know an endless amount of hassle because they just can't even get to the roots to to cut them back and things like that so i i feel like that's you know as important as as the beauty of the bamboo is is it going to be a happy relationship because you know everyone's got their bamboo horror stories they're typically from somebody, you know, my neighbor gave me this clumper, not, it's a runner. Oh, and it never spread until suddenly it did. And now it's everywhere. Well, it didn't spread because, you know, we had some drought years and nothing got watered. And now we had three years of rain and it's very happy and now it's everywhere. So, you know, you don't wanna have that kind of surprise. Um, it's not a happy surprise. Um, so I think that's a little bit about the design process. Um, I'll show you some pictures. So you can see, I guess it's screen left is a large uh, hedge of large running bamboo, timber bamboo planted in the ground. You can kind of see the barrier. It's completely surrounded. That goes down about three feet. It's very heavy 80 mil plastic, all nice new soil in between. And I have not been back to see it, but I imagine it's, you know, 30 or 40 feet tall by now. On the right side, you see uh, a wood box of a similar timber bamboo, which won't get as big in that box because it's only two feet wide, but it's sitting, if the box is lined, it's sitting on a gravel base for drainage because we didn't want to make a big mess of the guy's patio. And, you know, he's screening out probably a 20, 25 foot building on his side side lot in a minimal space. And that's, you know, it, to me, it would be hard to do that in any other way. If you put a runner in the ground there, uh, it would be so hard to maintain. Ultimately, you'd be undermining the fence posts and making a big mess on the patio with th this particular box, the face comes off. So if you ever do need to divide the roots, uh, it's much more doable. Um, and we like that because we can, we can guarantee, you know, if someone looks me in the eye and says this bamboo is not going to get out, 
The one on the left, I'd say with proper maintenance, no. The one on the right, I'd say never, even with improper maintenance, it's not gonna get out. So here's some more boxes. Uh, you can see on the right one that's built, you know, down a, a, a stairway. And these are great for, you know, a lot of urban applications where you just don't have room, but you need height. Um, the lower ones on a deck. So these are just some examples. Um, here's uh, another nice long installation. Uh, they wanted it to look like their fence. So we built that in. I believe that's black bamboo in the box and then some temple bamboo in the ground. And uh, this was also in San Francisco. So in a very sandy location, uh, we could not excavate next to the, the zero lot line building next door because we would undermine the footing. So the box was a perfect solution. Uh, pressure treated box on the left, uh, pressure treated on the right also. These are just some more examples. Um, you can kind of see the one on the right had some uneven ground. So we had to you know, level them out and do some toe kicks on them, but that worked out pretty well. Um, Corten steel is really popular. Uh, there's also a Corten steel with a redwood box. Um, what I like about that one again is the face is removable for access to the roof. Um, but a lovely modern look. Um, galvanized containers also very cost effective. Um, on the left, they're sitting on a concrete slab. So again, nice level surface. On the right there, there, this is a coastal application and it had to step down toward the cliff. So we had to build a bunch of basically curbs with gravel to set these containers on. The uh, uh, client's neighbors had taken out a bunch of trees preparatory to building. And so she wanted something that would she could put in now that would grow in by the time they got around to construction. There's, there's a lot of use for bamboo there. Um, here is uh, clumping bamboo in the ground. So you can see on the left, you know, they're, they're planted in a wider space. They're planted somewhat off of the fence. I believe these are two or three feet off the fence. Uh, and then you can see them. I'm gonna guess that's like maybe a year and a half two years later, you can see how fast they grew in and how they're, you know, how the clumps are spreading out. Um, here's an, a really nice above. I think this is the same, same job. So before and after, I love that one. It's like, bye bye. Um, and that's, that's within two years, I believe. Yeah. Um, so quite impressive in terms of growth. Again, the clumpers grow really quickly. Um, here's a before and after of a runner as a screen. So the area behind the deck, these went in the ground. They were large plants to begin with, but she wanted that house gone now. And as you can see, you know, it's gone. So very effective. Um, there's just a pretty bamboo picture bamboo in the sun. I'm sure I skipped over some things, but um, I don't want to spend too much time just kind of reading through my presentation here. I'm hoping that people have some specific questions, which leads us to Q and A. Okay, yeah, we do have some questions for you, Joe. So I'm going to start at the beginning. Can I unscreen? And screen share here, or does that help? Oh, or, um, no, or leave it, it up, okay. I think, because okay. otherwise, then we'll see okay. everything. And if somebody wants to walk behind you, okay. Um, Lisa asks, yes. can you discuss the dwarfing effect of planters? Any sure. formula to keep in mind? XYZ yeah. planter size will reduce the mature expected height by 20%, 30%, etc. Yeah. So, Generally, we we cut it in half in a planter. That's a good rule of thumb. Ooh. So um, 
generally we it depends on the size of the planter but generally in those trough style planters that are two feet wide two feet deep you know x distance long we generally the rule of thumb is is half of its expected height in the ground now if you plant it in the ground in a two foot wide space it's going to do the same thing if you plant in the ground in a four or five foot wide space where it can really spread out and get some root mass, it'll get bigger. So in typical applications, like on a property line where you've got two or three feet, the expectation of growth in a box versus the ground is almost the same. Um, but typically in those two foot wide applications, half the height. So if it's a 30 foot tall bamboo, like Philostachys aurea, which you see everywhere, you know, it's gonna get about 15 feet tall in a box or in a two foot hedge. Um, you can put a big bamboo in a really small pot and it'll grow. The smaller the pot versus the bigger bamboo, the bigger the bamboo, the, um, the more the dwarfing effect. But rule of thumb is cut it in half. Does that answer the question? Yes, I think it does. Cool. I was just muting and unmuting. So sure. Jackie would like to know how fire resistance are resistant are bamboo varieties? Sure, that's a good question. So I'm gonna do my, I always feel like Joe Biden, like what, who is it? Uh, who's the guy that does Joe Biden on Saturday Night Live? Jim, Jim Carrey. Carrey. So here's the deal. <laughs> so the So the deal is, Bamboo is comprised of silica, cellulose, and water. So it has no volatile oils. Oh, you want to go there? Here we go. So it has no volatile oils. This is very few. I don't think it has any. But um, so it's really hard to ignite. What? What the? There's two things. There's there's some things that the fire departments doesn't like about it. They don't like that it's hollow. And so that if it does catch on fire, it creates a chimney effect. They don't like how close to houses that people plant it. And it's often, you know, in those five foot side setbacks. So it's within three feet of the house. Um, and the other issue is really maintenance. If you don't prune out the dead canes, if you don't clean out the leaves and you just let it grow into a half dead mass, it's, you know, very susceptible to embers. And then, you know, once it's going, it's going. In, in a firestorm, I think it's all bets are off. I think everything burns, but in, a, in an ember storm, properly maintained, I would say it's low fire hazard. Um, it's less fire hazard than a fence, a dry fence. Um, so a lot of it has to do with maintenance and um, cleanup. And then, you know, the rest is just, boy, it's luck of the draw because I know there's areas that are banning bamboo. I, I, I don't agree with that, not just because it's my livelihood, but I think it's the redheaded child that's getting beaten for having a messy room and it's not its fault. So, um, Depends on who you talk to. Fire departments say very flammable. I say not as flammable as bays or eucalyptus um, if properly maintained. So, you know, watered, pruned, thinned, that sort of thing. So I don't know if that answers the question, but it's an it's a, it's an on it's an ongoing argument for sure. Thank you. Um, sure. Isabel asks, how deep can runners go down around a barrier? Good question. So um, in the ground, here's, here's, let me talk about why barriers work. So a typical barrier minimum would be 30 inches. That's for your average hedging type bamboos that are grow 15 to 20 feet tall in a two to three foot wide space with typical clay soil down a couple feet down. So, you know, a foot to 18 inches of topsoil and then some clay. 
Um, when we install them, we try to leave the the bad soil down at the bottom and you know trench down to planting depth and put good soil above and you know extend the trench down into the clay but not disturb it too much. Um, in sandy soil, they can go three feet or more. Um, the other reason they work in the ground is temp barriers work in the ground is temperature. As it as the you go down into the ground, the temperature drops and the soil gets you know, not to the bamboo's liking. It wants to be growing horizontally. The smaller the space, the more you squish it down, it can go deeper. Um, if you are planting uh, in a raised bed or against a wall where the bamboo can run down that wall, it can go down 10 feet because that wall is warm and moist and it really doesn't, the barrier doesn't really get effective until you're down into the ground a few feet where the temperature drops and the soil conditions are bad. It's dry, it's hard. Um, so it's, it's unfortunately one of those questions that the answer is depends. And we go, usually we'll go through the variables. You know, I would say, Anytime any one of you, you know, attendees have a specific question, we are happy to answer it, but we, you know, we'd want a lot of information and um, could, you know, guide you in whether what you're wanting to do, we think it's likely to work or not. There's a lot of tricks, but generally a barrier for running bamboo is going to be, you know, a 30 inch barrier with a couple inches sticking up or a 36 inch barrier with a couple inches sticking up. That's typically what we use. So great. Yeah. So I'm going to mention that at the end um, about the resource. So mm -hmm. I have another question. Yes. Can you talk about the habitat quality of bamboo compared to natives? It seems like they're not beneficial to local critters. Is that true? Well, um, birds love it, love bamboo. We find a lot of nests in the bamboo. Uh, deer don't eat it, which is really great. Um, I don't, I don't mind not feeding the deer. They have plenty of other stuff to eat and. Um, I think it's great that you know it is deer proof. Um, generally, we don't find too much living in the bamboo that we want. If you let your bamboo grow into a thicket, you'll have rodent activity, and rodents can be you know rats, uh, you know mice. Uh, Gophers underground do like to eat bamboo. They typically don't bother the old woody stuff, but they like new bamboo plantings. Um, you know, natives in terms of, of habitat, I would say, I think it, you know, it's, it's par with any, any other landscape plant. Um, in terms of, um, you know, water use, I would say it's moderate. It's, and again, a lot of that depends on the application. So obviously in a container where it can't tap into the groundwater, you know, you're gonna water more regularly. Um, new plantings need more water. Middle-aged plantings tend to do well with less. Old plantings that have started to get really root bound tend to need more water again, and it's hard to get it to penetrate. Um, if, if there's a specific habitat question, I could try to answer it, but I, I think of it as being, you know, fairly habitat neutral, um, sort of on par with other landscape plants. I mean, we have it growing wild all around our nursery and the deer sleep in it. Um, they like to sleep in our greenhouses too. So I guess it's warmer at night. Um, Birds certainly like it. Squirrels, you know, scamper around in it. They can sometimes eat the new shoots, um, which is a pain. Um, generally, they don't if there are other things to eat. I'm not sure what else I can say about that, but I'm willing to pursue okay, it. Well, if, yeah. if there's more, we'll, sure. we'll get that to you. I think uh -huh. that you cover that pretty nicely. Um, 
is the runner containment option in the runner containment options is there wire or fish line to keep it vertical yeah we've done that um there are some species that are very vertical and um you know if that's a requirement we can steer you there we have done you know applications where we've set posts at either end and done you know um like braided cable turnbuckle systems that are cross tied every so often. Um, they need to be, those kind of systems need to be removable um, because you'll get new growth outside of those cables. So you need to be able to take it down yearly and, you know, walk it down to one end and kind of rewrap and hook it back up. Uh, it works really well. Um, so, yes, that's a very doable thing. Okay, next question. How many years would those running bamboo in containers last? Do they need to be taken out and divided? We, our, our average is about 10 years, we think. Um, again, depends on uh, care and maintenance. So for example, if you are good about thinning and pruning your bamboo once it grows in. Um, you definitely reduce photosynthesis, which reduces root growth, which can slow it down. Um, you know, balancing out the fertilizer so you're not just pumping it full of goodies and, and making it grow faster than you want, you know, sticking more to nitrogen and promoting less, less root growth. That can be when you start playing around with other than just the balance across the board and PK um you know controlling water so it's adequate but you know um you're not uh you know flushing out nutrients or um and you know underwatering can be hard on it um my my way around that has been when is the is the boxes with removable faces because I've pruned, you know, I've root pruned, I've removed stuff from galvanized containers. And it's challenging because really to remove bamboo, you have to make a hole. You have to sacrifice some bamboo and you have to have a hole to work into so you can kind of cut, pry and peel sideways because pulling bamboo straight up out is really hard. There's a lot of compression in those containers over time. Um, with the boxes with removable faces, they unscrew, there's all the roots. We go in with a sawzall or a chainsaw, cut through them, cube them out, pry them out, and we put the boxes back on, repair the plastic in the corners, and use that bamboo to replant. Um, you know, usually there's more than you need. So if you want to, you know, add on, you can, but we replant and then you're good for another chunk of time. So you know, my guess is around 10 years. I've seen it go less, I've seen it go more, but that seems to be pretty average. Nice, nice, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I like this question. Favorite clumper for East Bay, Berkeley, Oakland area? How tall? Uh, I don't know. So <laughs> no, I'll tell you, I'll tell you some Give of us my- different, different okay. heights because I can't, Sure. I'd have okay. to lo locate no. her to. <laughs> That's why I say depends. Okay. But yes, we'll play. So my, I'll tell you what my favorite clumpers are and why. So probably my favorite clumper, and I'll, I'll give you the code first is CCPA. And no, it's not Russian, although it sounds like it could be. It's Chimona calamus palins. The common name is gray bamboo. It grows 20 to 25 feet tall. It's absolutely stunning. It gets a large, you know, it can get up to inch and a half canes. And what I like about it, other than its form, is uh, the new shoots are purple. The canes in the shade are grayish blue. And in the sun, they go all the way to pumpkin orange. So a lot of color in bamboo is sun driven. So it'll do one thing in the shade and another thing in the sun. And generally more sun gives you more color. 
Um, less sun can often be lovely and more lush, um, you know, just greener. Um, it's super fast growing. Um, it'll grow in, in coastal California in the hills. It'll grow in from dappled light to full sun. So it's got a big range of, of growth. It's very cold tolerant, I think minus 10. Um, it's fairly heat tolerant. It doesn't do well in the Central Valley where it's just hot and dry, but coastal warm, um, really nice. That's one of my favorites. Um, the other, probably one of the most popular clumpers, again, grows 20 to 25 feet, is Bambusa textilis gracilis, uh, B-T-E-G. Uh, a lot of people are probably familiar with weaver's bamboo or Bambusa textilis, which is the larger version, 30 to 40 feet tall. Beautiful, uh, you know, powdery blue-green combs. Um, the gracilis is just a more delicate form and it's pretty upright. Um, like sun, at least half day sun, um, not as cold tolerant in, you know, the, the, in the, the low twenties, you know, hard frost, upper teens, they start to suffer. The runners, you know, are generally good down to 10 minus 10 minus 20. But that's a lovely bamboo, candy stripe bamboo, beautiful pink and green stripes on the canes, very erect, very upright bamboo, a little, a little weep at the top. Um, HCFD, com our common name for it is candy stripe. It literally looks like you know candy sticks, but it won't get those colors unless it gets a little sun. Uh, chocolate bamboo, turns chocolatey brown in the sun, beautiful form. B R F, F as in Frank. I mean, there's four really gorgeous ornamentals. There's, you know, 20 or 30 more that I like, but those are some of my favorites. Okay, then I'm going to stop you because I have 20 more questions. Okay, I was so, going to stop there anyway. <laughs> oh, yay. It sounds like it's, it's like asking a parent what their favorite child is. Well, yeah. it's, it, you know, <laughs> It's literally with the clumpers, it's like a candy store. You know, the runners is like, do you want a yellow cane, a green cane, or a black cane? With clumpers, it's like, you want blue, you want purple, you want red. You know, there's just a lot more ornament in the cane color with clumping bamboos. Nice. So Magda asks, how far apart do you typically plant the clumpers in the photos? Uh, those are probably about five feet apart. That's pretty average. And some of that depends on the species and the growing space and the immediate need. You can plant them closer, they will grow into a hedge sooner. Um, but I kind of do a thing like, okay, if the growing space is five feet wide, I'll plant them in the middle of that growing space, five feet apart. And it seems, you know, by the time they're, they're five feet front to back, they're overlapped in the middle and, you know, you've got a nice dense hedge, but uh, with runners, it's more like three feet, um, clumpers, three to five, but generally more like five. Okay. Let's go to the next question. Um, what are good companion plants for bamboo, if any? Um, so if you put bamboo in a container, give it to the bamboo because it'll, it'll squeeze it everything else out eventually or put you know something in there that you're not attached to for very long just a little you know uh annual color or something like that um, they tend to take over um in a naturalized setting so here we have it you know we have uh ferns and grasses growing in with the bamboo reeds different you know different coastal plants um but in a container or a small space, you kind of you kind of want to just give it to the bamboo, or know that whatever you plant is kind of a short term thing. Cool. Okay. Next question. Um, I'm going to skip a little bit into. I'll get back to the ones that are going to take long. Okay. Um, what are drainage 
what about drainage holes in the containers? Like yep. in a galvanized trough, how many holes do you drill? How wide? Is there a risk the roots will creep out of the drainage holes and end up sending shoots outside the container? Boy, this is a thinking audience. These are great questions. I told you. And I should have I should have covered that. So thanks for bringing it up. So galvanized containers. So so the first rule of thumb with bamboo is don't put a hole where you can't see it. So we never put them in the very bottom. We put them in the side down low and we don't put them on the backside if they're up against the fence. So we only put holes where we can see them. We generally tend to set those uh, galvanized containers either on hardscape or on a gravel bed. I don't like putting them straight on dirt because they tend to settle unevenly. And if something does get out that hole and there's leaves on the ground and it's, you know, you don't see it, it can get out and, and run away. It's not very common, so, but it does happen. Um, so we usually put them on curbs and we drill the holes in the side. We put uh, uh, two to three inches of coarse gravel or lava rock in the bottom to create kind of just a, a drain layer to, to, to cover the holes and to keep, you know, standing water, keeping, keep the dirt from, you know, constantly wicking up water because it does like to dry out a little bit. Um, bamboo doesn't like soggy soil. Um, so that's how we solve that. With the wood boxes, they are, there's an air gap under them. So they're up on feet. They're on skids that are about two and a half inches. There's a liner in there, bottom and sides, and we drill holes through the bottom. And we ask clients to look under there once a year and make sure nothing's peeking out. And if they see something getting out, cut it off. Generally, by the time it's trying to get out, it's time to divide the bamboo because um, it's usually going to spend its time filling up the box before it looks for a way out. It doesn't really like being in the gravel. There's not that, that much there for it nutrient wise. So we haven't had problems with that, but that's how we address it. Uh, make sure you can see the holes, put them down low. Let's see, five eighths to three quarter inch holes about a foot apart, foot to a foot and a half apart. Don't use just the drain hole plug that comes in the galvanized container. It's too high, so you'll have a lot of standing water in the bottom. And it's, you know, if that one shot clogs for some reason, you know, you'll, the bamboo will drown. So um, I think that answers it. Yes, it will. Okay. Is a big clumper, maybe Alphonse Carr, a good idea for a 24 inch diameter container or would a runner look better in a container in the long run? Good question. Um, so we don't consider Alphonse Carr to be big in the clumper world. It's kind of a smaller to medium size. Um, it does fine. It's easier to get out of the pot and let's 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 talk about pots for a second because if you use if you plant bamboo in a round pot or a square pot you don't want anything that that pinches together at the mouth of the pot cuz you'll never get the bamboo out the roots will expand underneath and you'll have to kiss the pot goodbye so flaring out uh, not a lot of ornamentation because the roots will mold themselves to the interior of the pot um, I think it depends. So both will work. I think it depends on form. What people love about running bamboo is it's classic upright form. It looks like a bunch of little trees and you can prune it to be more open. You can, you know, uh, do the poodle cut and limb it up and, you know, top it and be really formal with it. The clumping bamboos tend to look more like bushes in their growth habit. And you can prune them to be more open. They also generally tend to be less upright. They're more V-shaped or umbrella shaped. Um, so both work. And there's no risk in a pot if you, you know, are smart about it. You know, don't don't half bury the pot with drain holes underground. You know, set it up on the hardscape or on blocks or something like that. So you can see what's going on and keep an eye on it. So, so both will work. Completely different looks, though. Okay. 
Um, is there a difference in growing habit comparing tissue culture grown plants versus divided plants? We, so I know a little bit about that. Um, we do all of, all of our propagation is by division. So it's either root division, which works fine with both clumping and running. Um, and there's seasonal differences as to when you acquire and plant those roots. With some clumping bamboos, you can also propagate by cane cuttings where you take, you cut between the nodes and you cut off all the branches and you bury a, a piece of cane in a, a lightweight soil and it will send out roots from that node and branches and make babies. That's our preferred uh, technique here. It's pretty foolproof if you do it, you know, if you do it at the right time of year under the right conditions. I have bought some tissue culture plants. Um, I've had several instances where what I was told I was buying was not what it ended up being. So I'm a little leery, but if you know what it is, you know, if you're sure what it is, I imagine that the growth would be similar. Um, I don't do too much with that and I don't have too much stock that is tissue culture, but that's what I know. Right. Um, do you have any favorite varieties that you recommend? Quick growth, beauty of cane color, canes or color, any exotics we may not be familiar with? And I have to clarify that this is coming from a person in LA. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. So you, you down in LA have more exotics than we do because of your climate. So you can grow things, nurseries down there can grow things that we can't. So there's a lot of tropicals. So the most, we grow some sub, subtropicals like, you know, bamboos, old hamii and the textilis and things like that. Alphonse Carr is a, you know, not quite a, a subtropical. It's a little more cold tolerant, but the things that you're familiar with, um, there, there are some new, you know, cultivars out there. We don't have them all. Um, you know, there's things like there's a, you know, there's textilis with white stripes on the cane. That's new, you know, and we, I think we have one of those because we traded for it. Um, you know, you have exotics down there like Bambusa Laco, which is a black clumping tropical and people love black but they don't want runners so you know that that's a beautiful one also those tend to make better house plants because they don't need cold so the tropicals and the subtropicals are often good choices for indoor atrium plants or things like that because they're just more tolerant of that more even warm temperature um i don't know do we have any crazy new bamboos that they wouldn't know about? I don't know. I mean, I think, I think those, you know, those ornamentals that I discussed earlier, you know, the chocolate bamboo and those are just the gray bamboo are just really stunning, but they're, what we, what we sell is what grows in, in Northern California, you know, in the greater Bay area. So it's kind of tailored to that climate. Yeah, that's why I said um, LA, yeah. so uh -huh. you would know. Okay, um, how fire resistant are the combs that are shed on the ground and end up on the ground? I think so. So the she the comb sheaths and the leaves are are once they're dry, they're tinder. So that's what I figured after yeah, the yeah. other talk. And, that, and <laughs> okay. that's and that's what what you don't want around. That's what freaks out the fire departments. Okay. Or one of, one of the things, yeah. Talk to us about bamboo setting seed. Is it true this happens on a worldwide basis and all the plants that set seed die? Aha, bamboo flowering. Are we prepared or what? <laughs> okay, so we, we figured this would come up. So why does bamboo flower? So the most common thing that we see is stress flowering. 
This is bamboo that's root bound. It's been in one place for years. It has no place to grow. It doesn't get watered. It doesn't get fertilized. It's just completely stressed out. It goes into flower, but it does not make seed. It does deplete itself into flowering. Sometimes you can talk it out of it by cutting off the flowering stalks and it will continue to shoot the, the Generally, flowering is bad with bamboo. You don't want to see that unless you're a collector and hoping to get some exotic seed. So um, the motivation you know, with stress flowering is to keep your bamboo well maintained so it does not go into flower. The, the real you know, unusual thing about, about bamboo is what's called gregarious flowering. So it is a worldwide event. Bamboo is a generational plant. So let's say black bamboo. So as far as we know, unless there's some hidden cultivar, every black bamboo plant that we have around now is from is a, the generation since the last flowering. So when it flowers, yes, it dies. When it's gregarious flowering event, it dies all around the world. It's not everybody drops dead tomorrow. It, it, it's sort of almost like it travels, you know, it'll go from China to, you know, here to the US, you know, and um, it, 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 it's hard to get a read on when it's gregarious and when it's stress. When we think it's a gregarious flowering, we stop selling it until we know for sure. Um, we don't want you to buy plants and have them die. Um, the, the flowering cycle is long and unknown. Um, actually in some bamboos, it's, it's a short cycle and they don't completely die off, but in the, in the typical, you know, bamboo flowering, you know, it can be 50 years, a hundred years. We don't even know because nobody knows when the last time it flowered is. That is one of the tricky things about bamboo. Um, and, and the only thing we can do is, you know, keep an eye on it, talk to other growers and sellers. And as soon as we think it's, you know, a problem with flowering, it doesn't get sold until we know. And I've had it, I've pulled, you know, bamboo off the market for five years and then, you know, had everybody agree, nope, it's not flowering and re, you know, reinstituted it and had it be fine. I don't may have, don't know why it was flowering here. Um, so it's a bit of a sticky wicket, but yes, it does do gregarious flowering. It does do stress flowering. It's pretty rare. Thank you. That was actually very enlightening. Can you please review best practices for removal and division of bamboo, specifically clumpers like koldami. Okay, so, so removal is one thing and division is another. So let's talk about removal. Are we just getting rid of it and <clears throat> not trying to, not trying to harvest it? And by harvest, I mean, do we want to replant with any of it? Because if you want to just get rid of it, you just go after it with chainsaws, chopping bars, whatever it takes, chainsaws with carbide blades. <coughs> Old Hami Eye is probably the worst bamboo in the world to try to remove. The, um, <coughs> the roots are like silica encrusted burl and they're really dense and everything gets dull and it heats up your tools and dulls them and wears you out. So um, generally with Removing bamboo, we try to use the canes as leverage when we can. So we don't typically cut everything down and then go after the roots, although sometimes that's the way to do it. <coughs> we try to typically to remove a clumper. Let's say we're just removing it or reducing the size of the clump. We dig down, we kind of find the perimeter of the existing root ball and dig down. Uh, you know, typically it's going to be, let's say with old Hamiai, it's going to be 18 inches. And now you have a void to work into. And then you go in 
with a chainsaw or a sawzall and you, you cut out a big chunk of roots, you, you slice behind it and you get in there with pry bars and you pry while people are pulling sideways on the canes. And that leverage tends to give you a lot of torque on the root balls. Otherwise it's all just prying. So we, we try to use the, the canes when we can. That's true of runners as well. For harvesting, you can, so time, so remo removals you can do anytime. Uh, if you want to harvest the plant, you have to be more specific. So let's take old Hamiai again. If we were harvesting, i.e. removing with an idea about replanting, up here, we'd want to start getting those those uh, those roots in late spring, early summer, because we're getting them right before their spring summer shoot. The roots are already primed. They've done their little cycle of shooting and um, and pulling energy back down into the shoots. So if all you get is the root mass and you throw it in a pot, it will grow. You'll get a bunch of little stuff at first, but eventually you'll get some big stuff. If you're harvesting canes, there's kind of a proportion between how much root you get and how much cane you're trying to save. There has to be enough there to support the growth. And so, you know, if you were typically harvesting old Hamiai that was, you know, two to three inch canes, 30 plus feet tall, and you had, you know, three nice big chunky canes, you would need probably, you know, at least a 24 inch diameter chunk of roots around that. If it was too small, you'd be better off cutting off the canes and just saving the roots. So there's def definitely a proportion and timing. Um, with runners, the, the harvesting is wintertime when they're dormant. So January, February, March, even into April before they start shooting. The rule of thumb for harvesting is get them right before they start shooting. Uh, as they're starting to shoot is still fine. When they're halfway into shooting, if you start chopping them up, the shoots will probably abort. Um, they'll still live, but you'll lose that new growth because it'll just shock them. If you harvest at the right time and, and put them in the right place, i.e. don't harvest them and put them in full hot blazing sun, you can often get by without topping. Uh, reducing the leaf, uh, the leaf mass, you know, so the the bamboo can focus more on rooting in than keeping the leaves alive. Uh, a rule of thumb for that, you know, if you're unsure, take a third off of the height, and you know, thin the canes by a third and get a good size root ball. That's for harvesting. For for removing, you know, there's really brute strength and some specialized tools and a couple of tricks uh, and again if anybody has a removal that they want to know how to attack we can often consult with you through pictures on the website and give you some tips and show you the tools that we use um, they do help and they're not things that you would normally find some of them are custom made um, does that help yeah that's great um like I was saying earlier, I think we are all very lucky that you decided to become a sponsor because you're an amazing resource for us. And especially you folks up in the Bay Area, I want you to reach out to Joe because I mean, what a great place. And if you haven't visited their website and looked around yet, please do. Okay, we have plenty more questions though. Sure, well, I'm glad, it's, I like yeah. questions. Can you talk about proper pruning and thinning? Sure. So, um, generally, when you plant bamboo, other than dead caning it, getting rid of the dead stuff or canes that are growing, you know, sideways or you don't like, you don't want to start right away with too much thinning because it does slow them down. So we generally like to let them grow out for a couple of years before we start, you know, bending them to our will. Um, the rule of thumb would be the new, the new growth, you know, each year is going to be 
prettier, you know, fresher, bigger. So, so with running bamboos, we, you know, we let everything grow. We let them go through the shooting season. We don't mess with them too much because the shoots are tender. In the fall, when the shoots have hardened off, you know, they've branched out and leafed out, then we go in and dead cane, thin out the small stuff, thin out the lower stuff, limb them up, top them. With some bamboos, you can literally top them from the ground. You can't grab a new green cane and, and arc it over, it'll snap, but an older cane is pretty flexible. We always, uh, um, if we top them, we go right above the, the branching node. Uh, it doesn't hurt to go higher, but it always dies back to the next node and you end up with a bunch of dead sticks. And you don't want those on the branches inside because you'll go head in and get one in your eye. And believe me, that's no fun. So you want to prune back to the node. Um, thinning, we usually just cut off right at the ground. Um, the same thing is pretty much true of clumpers, you know, aesthetic pruning. Do them when the shoots have hardened off. You know, we do those in the late summer and in the late winter because they shoot in, in spring and fall. So we, you know, again, don't mess with them too much when they're when they're shooting. Um, does that answer it? Yes, that does. And actually, the next question is kind of seems related. Can you discuss options for controlling growth of a clumper? Are there benefits to putting clumpers in containers, which I think you already kind of covered, but go for it. So in containers, it's the same as runners, you know, just, just thin them, prune them, you know, don't, keep, keep an eye. I mean, the, the game with containers is how much can I let it grow before I can't get it out anymore to divide it? Um, so you have, you know, you have to be able to make that call because once they get really root bound in there, it can be hard to get them out. Um, in the ground, it's really, um, if, it's, if it's in the ground, really the best way to do it is to dig down next to it on the side that you want to remove and then cut into the root mass and peel them off sideways and pull them out and use those for propagation or dispose of them and just throw new dirt back in. I am a, a big fan of putting clumpers in raised beds um, that I can deconstruct when they get full. And, you know, so, you know, a, a, a two by 12 raised bed, when it gets full, you unscrew the corners and there's access to all the roots and it's really easy to get in there and cut from the side. I'm also a big fan of clumping bamboos in rock rings, like raised rock beds, similar thing. It looks great. Uh, it's up out of the ground. You know, if there's drainage issues, it's not an issue. Um, and when it gets full, you take the rocks down and there's all the roots and you cut it back and you have propagation stock, you, you reconstruct your rock wall and, you know, or rock bed, rock ring and throw dirt in there and you're, you know, ready for it to expand again. So that's, I've used that to, to, to great effect. And also on hillsides where you have to terrace a bit, you know, rocks are a great solution because it's easy to take them down and put them back. Um, I think that's, it. Okay, great. Um, are bamboos are bamboo plants growing in popula popularity? You know, it it's very popular. Right, I think it's always been popular. It's super popular right now because it's such a quick growing privacy screen. And I think with the new you know COVID reality, um, you know. Oh, I'm going to be working at home for a while, and that you know that light in my window, or that nosy neighbor, or that junkyard next door. I just don't want to look at it anymore. Or the, you know, the Mexican restaurant that's blowing taco fumes at me, or whatever it is. You know, it's it's become quite popular. Currently, I mean, we're incredibly busy. I mean, it's you know. Uh, 
I don't think, you know, we've been this busy since, you know, before the, the 80s crash. Um, so, so I guess it's pretty popular right now, but I think, you know, what I'm, what I'm finding is that, you know, people are home, they're in their yards, that's something they can do. It's something that's really, you know, gardening is really, um, it's really comforting in an uncertain time. <laughs> Um, so there's just a lot of, there's a lot of interest and a lot of benefits other than just the screening. It's, you know, I, I came into, you know, the bamboo biz through marriage. I was a builder and I like to joke, you know, my only, you know, relationship with plants before this was they were dead and cut up into wood and I built things with them, but I've come to sort of view bamboo as it's almost it almost has the quality of a pet it's like if you invite it in in your home choose wisely you're going to have a relationship with it and it's going to make demands on you but it's going to give you a lot of beauty and satisfaction so you, you know you, if you if you have room for a chihuahua don't get a great dane you know so that's good advice in any situation yeah okay so i'm gonna we have 10 minutes left about. Okay. I don't know if you can stay any longer, but I have like a bunch more questions. So I, I can gonna... stay. Yeah, I can stay as long as you like. Okay. So I'm going to combine two questions because they sure. kind of go together. What's yeah. the tallest bamboo and what's the shortest bamboo? So the tallest bamboo that grows in Northern California would probably be Philostachys vivax or Philostachys bambazoides. They're giant timber bamboos. Uh, the tallest clumper is Bambusa obhamii. Um, the shortest would be probably um, um, Pleoblastus disticus mini, which grows about a foot tall. Um, those, there's a lot of ground covers that that really show you, yeah, it's the grass, it's, you know, the grass family. Um, so from a foot to, and it, the, the big timber bamboos here will grow 50, 60 feet in climate of origin, 80, 90 feet. But we don't quite yes. have, yeah. Okay, so Anna, how do you, you use timber bamboo? Um, I mostly, we mostly, my wife's a big vegetable gardener. So we use a lot of bamboo as stakes, you know, to tie things up. I'm particularly fond of the, the, um, chesqueas, the clumpers from, uh, South America because they're solid canes and they last forever. Um, those are really cool. Make great like tomato tripods, bean poles and things like that. I don't use timber bamboo to build much because I don't have time to build much. <laughs> um, I, I know that there's people that come here to, you know, build gazebos and palapas and, you know, tea houses and things like that. So um, I personally uh, don't have much time to build things out of the large stuff. So what we do with our, um, uh, our the bamboo that we either either dead cane or thin our groves is we've started making biochar out of it which is really cool and you guys probably know what that is a soil additive but uh, yeah. we did de we developed a way to bundle them you know together into like uh uh you know bundles and we burn them and then we crunch them up and we add them to the soil and we have found you know, we particularly use them with the cane cuttings and the babies and they go boom. It's pretty amazing. We inoculate it with uh, compost tea. We make our own compost tea here. And, but yeah, it's useful stuff. I just don't do much with it due to time. Yeah. Constraints. Makes sense. Okay. Um, the liner you refer to in a wood container is a pond yes. liner, another liner? So, so pond liner is, is pretty soft and rubbery. It's, I think it's EB, EPDM or something like that. This is a harder, uh, they, they sell it also as water barrier. 
um, but it's a harder recycled plastic, um, 60 mil, 80 mil, it comes in rolls. Um, you can bend it so you can fold it inside of a box. Um, the stuff that we use in boxes is only 40 mil, which is plenty. Um, but it's a specific product. It's sold as bamboo barrier or water barrier, but it's not pond liner. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. um, what are your typical bamboo varieties that can be found at your local hardware store nursery? Oh, well, probably the two most common would be like uh, Philistachys aurea golden bamboo. That's a probably the most popular running bamboo. And you could probably find that, you know, at Home Depot occasionally or hardware stores. Bambusa multiplex Alphonse car is probably the most popular clumper. It's a pretty bamboo, yellow cane with green stripes and has a pink blush on the new shoots in the sun. Makes a really dense hedge. It's pretty easy to control. It's not crazy roots. Will grow, you know, 12 to 20 feet. Um, you might find black bamboo. That's pretty popular. Um, you might find Mexican weeping. Uh, I believe that's flowering though, so I'd be careful. Um, I'm not sure if it's a stress flower or a gregarious flower, but we have a bunch of ours that flowered, but that's really grassy looking. Um, those I've seen, seen, you know, around and uh, you might find some Buddha belly. That's a nice big clumper. I think that one's pretty common. Those are yeah, but they should really come to you instead. So, <laughs> well, you know, if they're not in, anywhere near where they can find what they're what they need, um, you know, I guess I guess here's the question: If you find a bamboo and you wonder if you should buy it for your application, you can always email us and say, "Hey, tell me about this one," because you made you may not get the proper information in the store. Um, and we're more interested, you know, in changing the narrative about bamboo and having it be a success story than we are in, you know, making a couple extra bucks. We'd rather have, we'd rather you have a good experience. So, so we're available for that kind of stuff. Exactly, it's perfect. Can you break down the average cost of installing bamboo? Are the containment options more expensive than the bamboo itself? Uh, it, so with clumping bamboo, no. So we're probably talking about running, I would guess. Um, so the mo to me, the most expensive is running bamboo in the ground because usually there's access issues. There's crappy soil that you have to remove. You know, there's, you know, issues with how close to the property line and foundation and things like that. Um, there's a lot of on-site time and there's often a lot of travel time. So if we're doing it, the when I price it out, I find that the least expensive way to do running bamboo is the galvanized containers. And the wood boxes, you know, the custom made wood boxes and other things are comparable to a trench in the ground with root barrier. If you do it yourself and your labor doesn't count for anything, then that's cheap because you're not building boxes, you're just buying barrier and digging. So, so it's a little, it kind of depends on who's doing it. I find the cost, like commercially, the cost of containers versus containment in the ground is, is comparable. And there's the things I like about the containers are, I will guarantee it won't get out. Um, and I will, um, you know, you have the option of building them. So you have access to the roots down the line with the removable faces. I don't like having to dig in an existing root bound grove in the ground where you're cramped and you can't, you know, you're trying not to cut the barrier. 
and you're trying, it's just really challenging. So I think there's the upfront cost and there's the long-term maintenance cost. I will always vote for the boxes because I'm done digging that stuff out of the ground. <laughs> and I don't want yeah, my no, clients, sounds... I don't want my clients to have to do it. You know, I mean, most people are like, I didn't sign on for this, you know? So. Yeah, it sounds like a very uh, clean solution. Um, how far away from walls or fences should you plant clumpers in the ground on average? Um, I, the smaller clumpers like Alphonse Carr, I want to be, you know, I want at least a four foot wide planting space and I want it two feet off the wall. Uh, the bigger clumpers, I'd like five or six feet and I'd like to be three feet off the wall. Um, I've seen people do it in less, in less space and it can be done. You're signing on for a lot of maintenance. And so the places where I generally see like giant timber clumpers planted in narrow spaces are, you know, high end homes where they have a crew that comes in and just does it, you know, and knows what they're doing. And I, it's challenging to find, um, landscape maintenance people who have a clue about what bamboo is and what to do with it. So uh, we do often consult with homeowners who are having maintenance issues and try to educate the, the, the maintenance people. And it's actually worked in some cases and not in others. So, um, but yeah, three feet for the big ones, two feet for the smaller ones and more is better than less. Perfect, thank you. Yep. Um, does bamboo attract beneficial insects? Um, it doesn't flower, so you don't get, well, it doesn't flower regularly, so you don't really get bees and things like that. It does attract birds, birds nest in it. Um, I, think, I think its benefit is more like sound filtering, air filtering, bioremediation, so, you know, sequestering, holding soil together, um, cooling things down. You know, I've had people planted along the hot side of a building to get shelter, you know, to save on heating bills. I've had people plant it, you know, to separate, you know, busy roadways and control, you know, exhaust soot and noise and things like that. I, I feel like it's kind of insect neutral. Okay, that's great. That makes sense. Which clumpers work best in clay soil and slopes with partial sun? This is almost your last question. Well, it's your yeah. last question. So, so I don't there's... I don't think the clay soil is an issue. Um, on a slope, generally, what you'd be do, what I would recommend that you do is rather than cut in to the, the slope, you build up below and get some good soil above ground. You can, you can mound plant uh, clumping bamboo. They tend to mound up as they grow so they can be planted partially in, partially out. Uh, the issue with clay would be drainage. So if it's really dense undraining clay, you'd wanna dig down more deeply. Uh, very rarely we'll put gravel in the hole um, usually just good dirt that's going to drain down. Um, you tend to get more runoff, so you just control the watering emitters to not, you know, flood the hole too much. Um, so the question for that, you know, the answer to the, to the to the which bamboo would be, I'd go back to how much room, how tall, you know, what do you want it to do? Um, that. It, it's hard to narrow it down. I don't think the soil or the slope would be the, the limiting factors. Okay, that's good to hear. All right, the last thing isn't really a question. It is a comment. Thank you so much for being an APLD sponsor and giving this pre presentation. It's very in informative and Patricia is gonna use more bamboo now. Cool. Yeah, I, uh, bamboo is really, a fun landscaping plant. I mean, there's, there's so much you can do with it. And we, you know, we're happy to look at any crazy 
and it's often is the answer to some crazy thing like I got this amount of space and it needs to be this tall and there's nothing that will do it and except oh look bamboo will you know so yeah my pleasure thank you so much so um again I'm going to give oh wait there's one more Q&A just a thank you sure. you're welcome yeah my pleasure um, I'm this sorry has been I great can't. Joe I'm sorry I can't see everyone's faces, but like I said, I'm sure you're a gorgeous audience and go knock them dead. We are. So, you know, hopefully when COVID is over, we'll schedule some sort of APLD visit for yep. the, nor you know, Bay Area, Sacramento to come visit you. Yep. Um, if anyone has any bamboo questions at all, I think you guys can tell that Joe is the person to ask go check out their website. Um, you'll be able to reach him there. And uh, if you don't know how to do that, just go to apldca.org and click on our sponsors and you can get right to his website. And um, I'm gonna turn it over to Tony for a minute and let her give a final, wait, okay, good. The other one, great, great presentation. Thanks, Magda. And um, I'm going to turn it over to Tony for a minute before I turn it off. Thank you so much, Joe. That was amazing. I learned a lot. I'm sure everyone else did too, who, who can't speak to you the way I can, but th thanks again. It's a really uh, helpful afternoon. Cool. Um, thanks everyone for hanging out with us to the end. We always appreciate you being here and learning from our sponsors. And um, before we, Lock it down. I'm sending through the chat right now the link to our biodiversity symposium, which is next week. So just click on that to get more information and register. We look forward to seeing you all there. Thanks. We, ha we have a lot of people already, but not enough APLD members. So click on the link now. It's very reasonably priced. Yeah. I stopped sharing. Okay. Thank you again, everyone. We look Thank forward to seeing you soon. Yeah. And, and we're also, um, you know, this is a very easy outing, COVID friendly, very easy to social distance. It's outside where, you know, we do the mask thing when we need to. Um, so don't be afraid to come up. It's pretty, pretty safe here. And, and while you're at it, they have a great Instagram page, so follow them on Instagram, and then you're going to want to go visit them. All right, y'all. Take care. What? Bye, everyone. Huh?